All right, everyone, um, I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite types of books, which is the transforming book. Um, what's special about this book is you can show four images um, that sort of magically transform indefinitely. So here you can see I've got my penny drawing, uh, but this book can then change to nickel, dime, quarter, and back to penny. So how do we make this? Well, first we need a square of paper. So I'm gonna start with just, uh, in this case for the demo, just some regular copy paper, which of course is not a square. So we need to make it a square. Um, now copy paper is eight and a half by 11. So if you measure eight and a half, making sure you're starting right there on the zero and make a little tick at the 8.5 mark on one side, slide down to the other and do the same thing on the bottom. Now I'll connect those lines. This will get me on the way to having a perfect square, which you do need for this particular type of book. Okay. Now, by the way, if you're ever in a hurry, you might know this trick. One way to get a square from a rectangular type of paper, a piece of paper, is actually to fold a triangle like this. If you fold it perfectly where the corners are matched up, it will actually naturally line up exactly with that line. The problem is you also often get this folded crease, which we don't want. So that's why I used a ruler in this case. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this a piece off. Um, if you have a paper cutter or if it's thicker paper, you might wanna use like a ruler and a precision cutter, like an X-Acto blade. But for this demonstration, a rough cut with scissors is fine. Okay. Now that I have my square, um, I need to fold this into 16 smaller squares, okay? So what I'll do is first the classic hot dog fold. And I always like to check corners on both sides, make sure they're lined up. I hold everything in place with my fingers and fold. And really with all bookmaking, it's a good idea to score your folds. So you can use something like a glue stick or a pen. If you have a fancy bone folder, you can use that. But anything firm and smooth to make sure that those creases are really nice, okay? And actually for this book, if you wanna do extra, um, if every crease you make, you actually invert and fold the opposite way, it'll really make the later step a little bit easier, okay? Now after you have your hot dog bun, we wanna fold each of these guys in half, guys or gals, I should say. So um, I'm gonna carefully fold the edge to the center on both sides. So I'll go from the center out here. And I'll go from the center out here. Okay, so now I should have fourths. Okay, I'll do some quick scoring as well. I'm not going to invert and score every fold just to save some time. But again, if you do that, um, it's going to make future steps a lot easier. Okay. All right, so now we've got these four long rows. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'll turn it 90 degrees and repeat those steps. So we start with the hot dog fold. And again, I like to fold from the center out. It just reduces the chance of it shifting and moving too much. And just like last time, I'm gonna fold these sort of side wings uh, into the center. Again, right up against that center crease. So if you did this correctly, you should now have 16 uh, relatively even squares, right? Four rows and four columns, okay? Now, the next step is important. We want to cut out these center four squares, but we can't do that by coming in from the side. We wanna keep this intact to essentially make a frame with the outer squares. So what I recommend doing, I mean, you know, you, I guess you could just sort of stab at the center, um, but if you fold this in half, now watch carefully. Let me actually do it this way. If I fold this in half, I can cut right here, up, 
across and down and that's going to remove the center but just make sure you're cutting on the folded side if you cut on the open side this will not work okay so again here's that center fold and i'm going to cut away these middle two boxes cutting exactly on the creases Just like that. And now you should have a frame, okay? So hopefully this went well. Um, the next steps get a little trickier. We're gonna need some glue sticks um, and a pencil, okay? Now eventually you might remember how to do this um, without having to label, but I recommend very lightly adding a couple labels. It will make this next step much easier. Um, just don't use like a black pen because you don't want this to show through uh, for your artwork later, like if it bleeds through the page. So very lightly and small. Um, and at this point, by the way, keep your frame flat on the table. If you're constantly rotating it, it can get confusing. So try to keep it flat. Okay, don't lift it in midair. So I'm going to do a light A here and a light A here. Okay. And I'm going to do a light B here and here. And they must be in these exact spots, right? So we have um, A to A down here, B to B here. And then your goal now is to glue A to A and B to B, right? Almost like they're giving each other a kiss or something, right? So let's put some glue on this A here. Okay, and try and get as close to the edge as possible, but make sure you don't extend beyond that square, okay? So glue kind of carefully. I probably should have something to protect my table. So now A is gonna touch A or kiss A, right? Just like that. So now this right here is glued together and I'm not gonna move this around. I'm gonna keep this flat on the table. Now we want B to glue to B. So same thing, I'm gonna carefully put glue on B and get right up to the edge without actually getting glue anywhere else and have B kiss B, just like that, okay? So again, without moving, this is crucial. You know, there should be kind of glue underneath here and here. Now, without moving, I'm going to add my C's, C, C, on the first two up top, and my D's down here. Please put them in the exact location, C, C, D, D. And we're going to repeat that process. Okay, C kisses C, and D kisses D. Okay. Good amount of glue, not getting anywhere else. I'm gonna fold this whole section over like this. There's C to C. And then I'll do D to D. It's okay if you get on the other D, right? Because they're gonna be touching each other in just a second. Good amount of glue as close to the edge as possible without getting anywhere else. And you can, of course, use liquid glue. You just have to be more careful because if you use too much, it'll buckle and wrinkle. Okay. Now, actually, at this point, your book is done. But what you should do is wait a few seconds, ideally maybe like 30 seconds for that glue to set. Um, it'll make the next step a little easier. A lot of people get to this spot, um, but the, the uh, transforming part can be tricky the very first time. I promise it gets very easy once the creases kind of find their natural spots. Okay. So um, I should wait a little longer. We'll just go ahead right now. The key to making this book transform is you always want to find that um, opening and pull out like two doors. So whenever you see that opening, you want to pull away from each other. So watch for my first one. I'm going to take from the center and pull out. And it should, you can see, naturally it just transform. This would be my second drawing. Okay, now I see that that opening is this way. So I'm going to pull up and out like this. Now you can see my glue didn't fully dry there. And I'm going to crease it down. So the first time you go through these four transformations, you're going to want to kind of re-crease it a little bit, just so that, again, it finds its sort of natural home. And after you get through the all four with some re-creasing, it should uh, transform pretty easily moving forward. OK? So that's it. We have our transformation book. The next step is to add your artworks. Adios.